Hello everybody, this is Alessandra. Welcome to my home, welcome to my kitchen. We're still in quarantine, today's Sunday. And the reason why I know I have Sunday sauce cooking right there. Okay, that's a different tutorial. But with the Sunday sauce, I just wanted to make a different, uh, separate tutorial in conjunction with the sauce for the meatballs. Just because a lot of times people don't want to watch that whole process, but just make the meatballs on their own. So let's get started. I have two and a half pounds of beef. I have sirloin and ground uh, chuck. I have one large clove of um, garlic. You could use a little more, a little less. Usually this will do. A, a little bunch of parsley that I've uh, washed. Salt, fresh cracked peppers, uh, pepper, black pepper. Eggs, uh, I'm not sure if I'll be using three or four. I have a Parmigiano Reggiano, Locatelli. And um, I wanna move over and talk about the bread a little bit. This is stale Italian bread. Whenever we have a uh, leftover Italian bread, does not get thrown out. I save it. And the way I save this bread is in, in the, uh, if you don't have the white bread bags, you could use regular brown bags. Do not put it in plastic, it will get mildew. If you put it in these bags, it will last months. This is, a this is the way I do it, so you don't waste the bread, you always have it for the meatballs. When I go to my local bakery, if I'm running out of my own leftover bread, I'll ask them, do you have any stale bread? 99% of the times they give me bread without charging me, and that's amazing. So support your local bakeries, Go in with a smile, make sure they know your name, and then the people are people have such good hearts. It, it, it always amazes me. So, uh, just a couple days I went to the local bakery, and I said to them, you have any stale bread? They gave me a panella, which is beautiful. And now I cut it up in pieces. I always keep extra bread. I'm gonna seal it up, put it in my pantry. This will never get moldy. And even if you don't use it for your um, meatballs, you could use it to make delicious breadcrumbs. Okay, putting the milk in the bread. I also, I'm going to add a little bit of water so it's not all milk. Don't want to waste all half a gallon just with the bread. And once in a while, just push down on the bread or turn it so like that it gets soft on one side and you turn it. Um, once the bread is going to be soft, we'll start the meatballs. I'm gonna turn the bread. This side is soft, but the other side isn't. So I'm just gonna turn the bread. Don't be afraid to even break it up in pieces because it speeds up the process. The bread is soaked beautifully, okay? I moved it around a little bit with the fork. Now let's get started. I'm going to put my meat in a larger bowl. Um, you could use a veal, pork, and beef combination of the meat. I strictly like a good beef, not even the veal, just beef. So I'm going to, the meat is there, and now this is what I'm going to be doing with the bread. I'm going to be squeezing all the milk out and just keep Squeezing, and this is what the bread is gonna look like. Just put it in. Bread is in. Okay, I'm gonna put my three eggs to start. Okay, now salt. I'm gonna say give it a teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half and then we will taste it. A good crack of the pepper. Okay. The Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. And I'm going to put a little bit of the locatelli too. Okay, now time for the garlic. 
not cut, getting got a cutting board I'm just gonna go across into the garlic clove like this and just right over it look at that not worth getting a, a cutting board out just for one garlic okay look at that look how tiny perfect okay same thing with my parsley I'm gonna roll it up in my fingers and do this just a very tiny see that wow now just the the um the garlic and the cheese and the uh the bread i mean you smell the garlic and the parsley it already tells you we're making meatballs now for the fun part i am also going to remove my watch because i don't want anything to be touching the food also remove your jewelry if you're wearing rings just just take them off the rings are dirty the, the stuff is going to get in your rings and now let's start making the meatballs okay now you're going to mix this till it's going to be all all incorporated and you you'll see it changes see right now it's like a mixture of everything you'll see it changes color once it's all incorporated and ready to be fried yes let's talk about the, the meatballs you could um if i buy a fatter meat i um sometimes i do bake them before the sauce but i find that it's just so much easier to fry them especially if you're putting them in a tomato sauce uh you just fry them lightly not cook through and then you put them in your sauce to finish cooking uh, another wonderful thing if you have little kids that do not eat their proteins or meats, this is a great way to get some meat and you have the carbs, the meat, the cheese, the calcium. So this is like a meal in itself. So what I do is I make little tiny meatballs and uh, I kid you not, I have not found a little kid that doesn't like small fried meatballs. That's what I uh, grew up with. My kids uh, are growing up, grew up with, and their friends are also growing up with my teeny my meatballs. Okay, let's continue mixing. It's looking good. You see it's changed in colors. Still has a little bit of the cheese to get absorbed. So guess what? I am going to put in another egg. Usually, as a rule of thumb, what I use is one pound of meat, one to two eggs, and uh, a small clove of garlic, um, some fresh parsley, salt and pepper to taste, and parmigiano and the pecorino romano. You could just put the parmigiano in. Kids tend to like it a lot more with just the parmigiano and not the pecorino romano. I'm not a fan of tasting the meat raw, but I want to make sure that it has the right salt, the right pepper, the right cheese. So I'm going to show you a little trick of what I do before frying my meatballs. Let's get over to the stove. In the frying pan I'm going to be using, I just put a drop of uh, vegetable oil and I make a very tiny meatballs. I'm also going to press it down so it could cook quickly. Again, I'm going to just make a couple to taste and see if the meatballs are just the perfect taste. The little meatball is fried on both sides. Now I'm going to taste it and make sure that it's just perfect. I, I taste the perfect balance, so I'm not gonna touch it. Now I'm gonna add more oil and start rolling my meat meatballs. I have the flame at medium high, I put in the oil, and I'm going to start rolling the meatballs. You don't want them too large or too small. Now these are going to be the meatballs that will go into the sauce. So again, I don't roll them before, I do everything right over the stove, just because um, it moves rather quickly. So um, there it goes. 
the oil maybe doesn't look like it's frying yet so it gives me a chance to make a couple more uh, before putting them in. I've added the meatballs as I'm rolling them and they'll brown at different times. You just take a fork and turn them around. Um, I just want to mention something about uh, meatballs. One of the main ingredients in these meatballs is surely love. This is a big shout out to my daughter's uh, gymnastics uh, team and the, actually the whole gym gymnastics place because I do make them quite often and the girls do love them. So girls, this is all for you. And also for my good friend, Sue. Sue, you might uh, be finding a surprise by your mailbox tonight. I finished frying the meatballs that will go into our tomato sauce and now I'm rolling baby meatballs. What I do is I put a little piece of the meat in my palm and the tip of my fingers and I roll together for a quicker uh, rolling mechanism. Okay, so here you go. Both, a little bit more here. You roll, 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 roll and your hand just does the work. There you go. You got the two little meatballs. My sauce has been cooking about two and a half hours. Let's take a look and we're going to add the meatballs in now that I've just fried. Again, remember, for the tutorial of the meatballs, it's separate. I just want it because people sometimes just want to make meatballs without putting them in the sauce. And here we go. Oh, lost one. Gonna have a happy dog. The meatballs are in. The sauce looks fantastic. Now I'm just going to stir it, put the lid back on, and continue cooking. Ready to fry the little meatballs. Sophia and KK, these ones are for you girls. Okay. My meatballs are ready. Okay, so here are the small meatballs. And um, I got to tell you, I've not found a child that doesn't like these. Right, Michelle, Ashley, and Joshua? Everybody likes the little meatballs. Let's taste it. Perfect. Delicious. Soft, tender, tasty, wonderful. Now here we have the meatballs in the tomato sauce. And please... Uh, if you want to see the tomato sauce, I have it linked into the Sunday sauce tutorial. Okay? Now let's taste a little bit. You can see the softness. Look at the inside of the meatball. Let me get a little bit of the sauce. Amazing. Really, really delicious. This is perfect comfort food. A perfect gathering food. Um, when everybody sits around the table, everybody's happy with good food and love. A lot, a lot of love. Okay, thank you everybody. Please, if you like my uh, recipe, subscribe. Be safe, stay healthy. Until next time. Bye-bye.